We start this month's reconstructions with the tragic story of a 15-year-old Dutch girl, Martje Tambosa. Martje had lived in England for the past year. The family moved to Britain because her father was posted here by his company. Their home is at West Horsley, near Guildford in Surrey. The Tambosas have lived here in the village of West Horsley for almost a year. At four o'clock after school on Thursday the 17th of April, Marcia left home to cycle to the next village of East Horsley. The family was out when she set off, but her sister says Marcia wanted to buy some English sweets to take back to the Netherlands on a school trip that weekend. She was a shy girl, but popular and very pretty. This is her 15th birthday party, six days before her death. These are the last pictures her family have of her. Martia passed West Horsley Garage at ten past four. A passerby clearly remembers her blue jacket and her bright turquoise trousers. Marcia's mother had told her to keep to the main roads, but there's a well-used shortcut to East Horsley up the cinder path beside the railway. There are no known witnesses from this point on, but someone must have lain in wait. Some 10 minutes later, the 4.22 to London passed by, just as a resident, Anthony Mabbott, turned onto the cinder path. The cord was still in place. He didn't see at the far side of the field a bicycle. This is an aerial photograph showing the cinder path beside the railway, and this is where the cord was found. Here is Marcia's bicycle, and this, an hour later, is where a man was seen behaving rather strangely. He seemed to be peering into the next field, perhaps waiting for some people there to go away. This is where the man was standing, and here, 200 yards away, is Oakwood Close. Just before six o'clock, a man in a dark blue jacket walked into the close from the fields. A resident remembers seeing him pass her house. Just after six, two neighbors driving home into the close also saw a man in blue. They recall that he had mud on his right shoulder. He was walking in the direction of East Horsley. Five minutes walk away is Horsley Station. Just after six is peak commuter time, and the man would have been walking against the flow of people. By now, the family was deeply worried. It was not like Marcia to stay out without saying where she was. By nightfall, they were frantic. The police had been informed, and friends and neighbours began a search. At half past ten, they found her bicycle. Searchlights were brought in, but by daybreak, Marcia had still not been found. At half past eight, two gamekeepers out shooting met up with the police. Morning, well, we're looking for a missing girl. Have you you've been all through the woods, have you? Yeah, we've been shooting all round here. Yeah. Yeah. this morning. Yeah. Uh, have you seen anything unusual that you've not seen before? They well, remembered that they'd seen there, yeah. what looked like green plastic sacks just back there in the woods. They went back with the police and there found Marcia's body. 
and this is where the body was found. Well, this is the man in charge of the inquiry, Detective Chief Superintendent Vincent McFadden. How did Marty die? Marty died as a result of several blows to the head and she was sexually assaulted. Now, had there been other sex attacks in this area? We would normally expect to find with an investigation like this a number of other incidents which haven't been reported to us. But on this occasion we found only one incident that we know of and that took place on the Monday, three days prior to the attack on Marty. This involved a middle-aged woman that was walking from the medical centre towards West Horsley when a man jumped out of the hedge in front of her and did what we must describe as a war dance. The woman retraced her steps. This she, she was unhurt? She was unhurt. This man was described as five foot eight, slim build, collar length dark hair, two or three days growth of stubble, mid blue anorak and blue trousers. Now of course that man might be entirely innocent, he hasn't broken the law, so you obviously want him to ring in if he, if he is innocent, but do you suspect that he might be the murderer? Of course if, it's, if he is innocent we would wish to speak to him and would wish for him to contact us, but there is the possibility that he's the same man that was seen in the field. Obviously if there has been another attack in the area, if any woman has been frightened by a stranger like that, you desperately need them to ring in. Yes, of course. We would ask them to come forward and their calls will be treated with in the strictest confidence. Now, what about the man who one must assume was the murderer who was seen coming out of the fields through Oakwood Close and we last saw him turning the corner and walking in the direction of East Horsley? Is that the last that we know about him? Yes, he was seen at about two minutes past six in Ockham Road South. Obviously, he could have gone into a nearby house. He could be a local man. But we do have a sighting of a man at a railway station a little later on at seven minutes past six. A man was sitting outside waiting for his wife when this uh, chap described in a blue anorak and blue trousers ran to the booking office door through a gate because it was locked up over the bridge. He bumped into a number of people. He's described variously as having a blue anorak or a beige coat on. The train was moving off. He ran towards the train. The, the guard stopped the train and allowed him to get on. That was a good of the guard. Now, what time was that train? Was that, that was se seven minutes past six. So that would fit precisely. The time that the man would have been walking down that road. OK, so if anybody remembers it was they who got on that train, that 607 train we're talking about, Thursday the 17th of April. That is correct. And they would remember a train yes. stopping for yes. them. Obviously we would ask him to come forward because it would save us wasting resources if he's just an innocent person running for a train. Some of Marty's belongings were taken? Yes, missing uh, from uh, Marty, in fact, was a purse identical to this. It's Jordache make purse. Inside the purse was approximately £25, a key and an identical Dutch bank card to this one. This is, in fact, Marty's sister's bank card. Well, there can't be many of those. Now, if, if people ring with suspicions, are you going to be able to check those suspicions out and rule out people who are innocent? Yes, as a result of uh, the latest laser technology, we do have outstanding fingerprints, we have a minority blood group, and we also have forensic evidence, and we will either be able to implicate or eliminate if people will give us details of any suspects. Mr McFadden, thank you very much. If you can help in any way, the number is 01811 Please do ring. You can speak to detectives if you prefer at Surrey Police Headquarters. The number there, 0483 65272. That's 0483, the code for Guildford, 65272. Let's quickly bring you up to date about last month's programme. Calls to detectives here in the studio and around the country led to more arrests, more are likely, and there's been a breakthrough in two murder investigations. Marcia Tamboza, a Dutch girl who lived in Surrey, was abducted on her bicycle and she was strangled. 156 viewers called us and one was a criminal pathologist who had a hunch and detectives were intrigued by it and re-examined some forensic evidence. The result has been decisive. Police now know that Marcia's killer also killed Alison Day in East London late last year and is the same man who raped three other women. Detective Chief Superintendent Vincent McFadden says he's quietly confident the man will now be caught. The search continues tonight for 29-year-old Anne Locke, who disappeared last Sunday. She got married only four weeks ago, and nobody who knows her can think of any reason why she'd leave home. She was last seen at 8.30 on Sunday evening when she left London Weekend Television, where she worked. Her usual journey home to Hertfordshire took her from Waterloo Underground Station on the Bakerloo line to Oxford Circus. 
then to the Victoria Line to Finsbury Park, where she'd catch a British Rail train to Brookmans Park. She probably caught the 9.38 train that evening, arriving at Brookmans Park at one minute past ten. Anne's bicycle, still with the padlock on the back wheel, was found on this footpath. It's about 50 yards away from the station bike shed, where she left it that afternoon. Anne was wearing this ski jacket, but without the sleeves, it was blue on the back. She also had a pink sweater and a black leather bag. If you saw her during her journey home, or if you've seen her anywhere since, please call us.